Hello, I'm Louisa. And I'm Caroline. I feel like mine sounded really proper. I was like, hello, I'm Louisa. Because you're so proper. I am. Aren't you, so, Louisa? so prim and proper. Yeah, that's pretty much how no one has described me ever. Pretty much. <laughs> that's very fair <vehicle. laughs> Um, You've had quite a tough week, though, haven't you? Oh, I, I don't want to talk about it. Okay, I'll talk about it. Oh, if you um, insist. <laughs> twist my rubber arm. Let me tell you how shit my life has been. I got, I'm in a massive court battle with my first husband over oh, businesses and all of that. So that's always fun. And it's just amazing to me how dirty people play. But the lengths that they will go, I don't know, to not be fair. It's really interesting. Yeah. You're like, I don't know what to say about that. I'm like, mm, I haven't had an ex-husband before, <laughs> so I can't well, I'm on much. my fifth, so no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, and, and I've been diagnosed with skin cancer. No, that's so um, sad. I know. What the hell? I was a competitive swimmer, swim instructor, and a lifeguard. So I don't know how that happened. It, it's I'm always, in shock. It's always the way, though, that you, you'll be the smallest thing and you won't expect it. Oh. And then... Well, I've had this little, like, kind of mole on my nose for years. Mm. I keep asking my doctor. My doctor's always said no. And then I got this, like, really nice medical insurance. And I thought, well, I'll just go get it removed whatever it is and the doctor takes one look and goes that's skin cancer so yeah and you're gonna need massive surgery so just to add to your already shit weight oh my god and there's all kinds of other stuff that i legally can't talk about (laughs) yeah we've actually had to change the intro to this podcast because i said something before and someone has had a little shit fit about it so really interesting hello if you're listening (laughs) (laughs) 2.0 We changed it now, so you can't do shit, <laughs> asshole. But anyways, um, yeah, so with I'm having surgery on Wednesday on my nose, and the doctor told me that I will probably need a skin graft, and they're going to take a skin graft from my groin. So what? I'm going to have a pussy on my face. What? How, what? Like, how does that even work? <laughs> I don't want to know. I, like, I no. actually don't want to know either. No, I don't. don't yeah. go into I know. Defense. I was like, what if like pubes start growing out oh, of my like, nose okay. or something? No, <laughs> not really. Well, I'm blonde and not hairy. So hopefully it'll be fine. But like, what the <laughs> hell? I know people say that, that phrase, there's no skin off my nose. And it's like, well, there's going to be some skin off my nose. But yeah, the learning from this people is if you have a mole, or you have some dodgy spot or you feel like something's wrong with you. Go get it checked out. Get us and get a second opinion. This mm-hmm. is like the third or fourth doctor that I've had look at it who finally specializes in this. But I've had several doctors say to me, oh, no, it's fine. It's nothing. It's just a little bump. Yeah. No big deal. Always better to go um, oh. get it checked just in case because you never know that kind of no. stuff. So on that happy note, but here's the thing. I think that it's all going to be better than it was before. Mm -hmm. Everything happens for a reason. Yeah. And my nose is going to look better than it was before. Hopefully my pussy won't be on my face, but. Please stop saying that (laughs) word. I just can't even. You can't say pussy? What? Oh, Louisa. What? You have to love your pussy, Louisa. I can't say pussy, pussy, pussy. Stop. No. mm, mm, mm. (laughs) Okay. Next story. Okay. Louise is a little bit uptight, people, but that's okay. On another uh, really positive <laughs> note, I'm now about to speak about breakups and getting Ooh. dumped. So uh, this actually happened a, a while ago, but a friend and I were reminiscing on it. Mm. Reminiscing? Is that the right word? <laughs> um, remember that way amazing time? Remember that, remember that one time I got dumped? <laughs> um, no, and we were both just saying that you can, you can sense it. Mm. It's like ESP... I did call that ESPN before, which no. is, that's a sports channel in America. <laughs> yeah, no. Extrasensory perception. Yes. We all have it. You just get a vibe. It's like you just get mm. this gut feeling and you just know that, not even just a getting dumped or get breakups, anything. You just yeah. know when something is happening. Yeah. Again, and you've got to trust your gut. Totally. Anyway, so she, seeing this guy probably a couple months, was very serious very mm. quickly. Mm. And he is like, oh, um... Let's go for a drink tonight. And she was like, mm, would you really break up with someone in a bar? Probably not. And also the bar he picked was like quite a busy bar, not just like one that's a chilled, quiet, nice cubby hole. No, big open bar. Mm. 
Anyway, he um, goes there, they order a drink, and within their drinks arriving, he breaks up with her. And she's like, get out, just please leave. So then she's in this poor bar alone with a full drink, Aww. weeping. I was like, what kind of douchebag dumps someone in a bar? Like, at least go for a walk or like in your room or his room and then or I have rules even, around breakups yeah and then yeah. or at a park or something yeah I okay what here's what I think is what my I rules know. don't do it over text is also another one okay. I've had that don't. happen to me like that is just plain rude okay. I had an essay once and I was like could you not have said this to my face I don't need a paragraph a word document a <laughs> sign written essay with Whatever that thing at university, you have to, you know, the one I mean at the end of the essay. What's it called? Uh, when you have to go to all the books and get it signed off. Oh, your references. References, that's yeah. the one. Yeah. I don't need a dumping text with references. He gave you references. No, he didn't. No. He may as well. I'm <laughs> <laughs> taking the first. <laughs> I, well, okay, my rule is do go to their house and do yeah. it there. Because then you can leave. Because then you can leave. Because I have dumped someone at my house and literally the guy spent all night running around my house crying, Just writing sobbing. me notes, begging, clawing me. And I, I mean, we'd been dating for like two months and I'm just like, fuck, this is not making me regret my decision. <laughs> You're being a stage but, five clinging out. Oh, I don't want to stay with you. But I had someone dump me after very, very, you know, serious, only been together for a few months, but it was like, you know, supposedly amazing and he dumped me on my birthday as i was getting ready for the party yeah i don't look here you should see louisa's face what? right now she's I, like what the fuck can't you lie and say you're sick asshole like, at least wait till the <laughs> day after tell me you have diarrhea and food poisoning all right and then the next day go oh i don't think it's gonna work out and for a woman a birthday lasts a month Oh, if you're a princess, your birthday it. lasts a whole month. Yeah, I'm not. I hate birthdays personally. I just don't. Uh, my birthday is right before Christmas, so it's always uh, been like, here's oh oh did, oh we oh, forgot your, your birthday. birthday. Sorry. Or here's did a he gift for both. Get you a present. He did. did he, he actually bought me back? a very nice watch <laughs> um, that he dropped off in this butt ugly Swarovski necklace that I smashed with a hammer. It was very thar- cathartic. And then I sold the watch. Oh, nice. um, Bit on, of a profit. Yeah, I sold it online and I gave it to this woman whose husband who just died the money. So that was oh. very yeah, and I gave her a whole bunch of free sessions because she was just a mess, but she had no money and I so saw, kind. Yeah, so I, I thought, you're a well, good person. I, I am a good person. It's so nice. <laughs> I thought, well, I'm not going to keep it. No, I could have given it back to him, but I thought, fuck you, because no. I actually didn't even go to my party. I was such a mess. I was, su- I was like, the <laughs> it's the worst breakup. Who does that? I ended up going to a bar with like ten of my friends who all like looked at me really fucking <laughs> with like pity in their eyes all night. You just got bright red eyes. Looks like you're stoned. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You just in the corner weeping with a bottle. But then you know he did me such a favor because now I'm with my partner who is amazing, and you know exactly. what I mean. So it does like even that, which was terribly dramatic it all works out mm. so if some asshole dumps you in a bar or on your birthday just know there's someone better coming there's someone better coming oh yeah i got dumped on my favorite walk yeah so there's a walk that i always do and he dumped me like in in a spot that i would always have to walk past oh. so i'd just be like oh there's that spot <laughs> where i was sitting in a car and got dumped oh <laughs> Well, here's my advice for getting over a breakup. I don't know if I've talked about this in the podcast before, but if you are having a hard time getting over someone, every time you think about them, imagine them with the worst case of genital warts and herpes and pus and just like infection, maybe some elephantitis. They they have never waxed or shaved or manscaped in any way. I've got the picture. (laughs) And yeah. Every time, think about that. Genital diseases, STDs, oh, okay. you smell, it. Donald Trump's head on top is super no, uh, there. So uh, someone horrific, uh, and you go, oh, yuck. And then, yeah, it works. Getting dumped. I'll I think, be, I think I'll it's be trying that building. next time I get dumped. It's character, it's character <laughs> building. It does getting dumped, though. You know, I think you're more empathetic. Oh, I you're stronger. Fully think it is character building. I would love another heart- dumping. Uh, well, no, I'm kidding. I don't want another dumping. I, I'm, I'm done. Kidding. I would not either. I, yeah, but, but I agree. Oh. It is character building. It is. So, when I was thinking of stories I could tell today, this is the one that popped into my head, and it is something that happened between two clients, or I guess. 
I don't know. I'll just tell you the story because it's crazy. So I used to have an office in a law firm and it was lovely and it was upstairs and it was great. I got it when I first um, started my hypnotherapy business. And so people would come into the law firm. They'd sit and re- they'd just tell them they were there to see me. The receptionist would call me and they would come upstairs to my office. So I had this woman who was lovely. She was like kind of in her 40s. She had a broken heart. She was gay. And she'd been having a relationship with someone she worked with. And then the woman called it off. So she's having to still work with this woman. And she's kind of broken hearted. And so we're kind of talking about her life. And she said, well, I think I'm a bit screwed up um, with relationships. I'm adopted. She said, my adopted family is amazing, but I found my adoptive mother when I was 18, and she said she is literally the worst person you ever can imagine. Like, the worst person. I'm just imagining Corella DeVille. Oh, and I said, oh, that sounds terrible. And she said, yeah, she's very wealthy, and she... Um, oh, she just, yeah, she, I think she bought her property, but then took it back and she played all these games with her and she'd say things to her like, I should have aborted you. I mean, she was apparently, oh, oh like horrible, horrible, horrible woman to her. But, you know, we talked more about our relationship and it was, that wasn't it. And she, she was cool. I really liked her. So a year goes by, I'm sitting in my office, I get a phone call. The woman, the receptionist says, come down here now. And I can hear this woman yelling in the background. So I'm like, holy crap. So I go downstairs and there's this woman who is done up to the nines, looks very wealthy, you know, dripping in diamonds and is like, how can you expect me to come in here to reception where everyone's going to know I'm getting therapy and isn't there a back to entrance for high profile people? And da, 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 da. And she's like, having a conniption fit yelling all of her crap out and i was just like come with me more of a scene come with me you're okay come with me and i just like literally grabbed her by the way i should have just marched her outside and said go away is what i should have done so i bring her upstairs and she's yelling the whole way and i said like people are gonna know you're getting therapy now you're screaming one just assumes you're there to see a lawyer yeah. it's a freaking law firm so all you need to do is sit there tell your name and no one's going to know anything and if she had called me we had two other entrances that you could come in where no one would see you and i have some high profile clients so that's what i would do for them yeah and it's just like are you kidding me anyway so she starts ranting and raving about i don't even know what like her neighbor has a dog and blah and i remember thinking this is the worst person i've ever met in my entire world uh, in my entire life and i was like this is that woman's mother no Uh, yes and i just knew it with every cell of my being that this was her mother and so she's like ranting about this and ranting about that. And her husband didn't leave her enough money. I mean, she only has like $20 million. Who can live on a $20 million? She wasn't high profile at all. She was rich, but she wasn't high profile. And I said, oh, well, do you have children? She says, no, I don't have children. And I'm thinking, okay. And I'm like, I know. They didn't even look alike, though. Like, but this just woman knew. was very blonde yep. and petite. This other woman was a tall brunette. Yeah, they're worlds apart. But I just, because I kept thinking, this is the worst person I've ever met in my this life. And I've met a lot of people. And so I just, you know, she's ranting about something else. And I said, what about your daughter? And I don't know. And I'm going, this is a punt I'm taking, right? This is a risk. And she's like, what did you say to me? And I said, I don't know. I just have this feeling that you have a daughter. And she's like, why the fuck would you say that to me? And I was like, I told you I don't have children. And I said, I'm really, and I was like, oh God, why did I say that? I'm obviously totally wrong. Oh, no, 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 no. And I said, I'm sorry. Just sometimes I get weird feelings about stuff and I'll say it, but that I'm totally wrong. And she's like, you're wrong. And then so she keeps ranting. And then about five minutes later, she goes, how did you know that? What are you, are you some kind of witch? And I was like, no, I'm not a witch. I'm really... Uh, you, you know, and I'm literally like going, how can I get this woman out of my office? I just want her out. I don't like her energy was horrific. Yeah. And I said, I, I don't know. And I didn't want to say, well, your daughter told, came to me a year ago and told me that her mother was the worst person in She's the world. And <laughs> that's how I knew it was you because you're really the <laughs> most awful person I've ever met. And so... Yeah, she just, and then she starts going, oh, well, she, you know, she's a 
Jack and Dyke and, um, you know, I should have aborted her. I mean, she said these like, and I was just like, and I remember just thinking, I you just, are the worst person in the I world. I just want you out. I just want you out. And yeah, and I was just like, well, I don't know what to tell you. I think, you know, I'm just a hypnotherapist, so this might be a bit above my pay grade. She's like, oh, I could tell you're useless anyways. Nah, nah, nah. And I said, you need to go. And she's like, well, I'm not paying for this session. Nah, 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 nah. And it was like, I just, I didn't want to fight with her. I thought, this is a woman who'd probably try to report me to yeah. like, you know, the counselor's association. Tell or, the media or something. Oh my, yeah, you know, I just wanted her out. And yeah, so I got her out. Her basically yelling the whole way out. A nightmare. The receptionist was like, I was waiting for that to get... She said she was literally standing on the stairs trying to listen because she thought that the woman was going to get violent with me and she was like, had the phone in her hand to like call the police. to call the cops. And yeah, crazy story. But she she was the most awful, horrific person. But it was... it was. What are the totally- chances that you knew though? Like oh you my just God. This- when you know, you know. When you know, you know. I just knew. I clicked that that was her mother and... And thank God that she had put her up for adoption because I think that she would have ruined her if she had yeah. actually raised her because she was. She wouldn't be the person she was today. No. She made Mommy Dearest look like Mother Teresa. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, I am not even kidding you. Oh, my God. But, yeah, just what are the odds of getting one client and then getting the other and then recognizing who they are because they didn't have the same names didn't or anything, right. nothing. Yeah. It was bizarre. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the hell the point of that is or why it happened, but it was interesting. But it also really taught me to trust my gut. And you know how we mm-hmm. talked about that intuition of trusting that when something's telling you, weird, weird coincidence. Very weird. Did you ever used to stalk people on Facebook and social media before you started dating them? Oh, my God. I basically could be a PI. <laughs> you're, you're an FBI agent. <laughs> oh, yeah. I always say that I should have been an FBI agent. I've got family in the FBI, and, yeah, it's kind of I miss my calling a little bit. But, yes, I did. <laughs> so you just find out everything about them? Oh, I would find out everything search so far into the internet it's not even funny and it's amazing what you can find if you follow the trail and then you can use that information to be like oh what about, oh, i'm really interested in this or that i mean i did that when i was younger of like yeah you and, like, and they'd be like oh my god you're into like deep sea king fishing as well and i'd be like yeah and what about this and the tide and no fucking nothing about it never done it but yeah you're like yeah i'm really into surfing i got every morning <laughs> That's like the other day the um the block NZ um teams have just been announced. Oh yeah. And me and one of my friends were like, Oh, the two guys are quite hot. Yeah. So just went on this full FBI agent stalk. Like couldn't find them anywhere. Then we were like going through Facebook comments like on the the block page being like, What are their names? What are their names? Eventually yesterday she sends me a screenshot on Snapchat and she's like, Got them. Like found their last names, and then she was like, screenshot of both their Instagram. She's like, damn it, private. But it's oh, the internet. It's amazing what you can find. I would hate to think what would happen if you Google my name. I'm gonna do it right now. Well, you've you've never Googled your name. Well, I mean, clearly I have. You know, but I haven't in a while, Louise. What I find interesting is there's hardly any other Caroline Cranshaws out there. There's only like one or two. Okay, the top things that come up when you Google my name. Your name's unusual too. Shit got loose on a Friday night when <laughs> Lee Hart drunk out of Louisa's shoe. Um, when Louisa drunk out of Lee Hart's shoe. Oh, that's what comes up. <laughs> yep. I love a good shoey. And then also... A good shoey. Ew. What does a smartphone addict look like? One time I did an article for the Herald. Oh. <laughs> um, about um, being addicted to your smartphone. And they made me download an app. That would um, say how long you'd been on your phone. Oh, no. It was I probably like terrible. 60 hours of 24. Oh. <laughs> and then it's, I like basically sleep with my phone in my hand. I'm not even kidding you. Like I literally wake up and I'm like have it in my hand because I'm always reading or looking something up or yeah. I'm the exact same. And, and I'll always be like first to reply to something. I'm just like, no, there it is, my phone. Boom, light up. Um, I want to get an Apple Watch, and then I'm like, that's a terrible idea because then it's on my wrist and I'll know 24-7 what's going on. Yeah, I think what's going to happen, our brains have not evolved to deal with this amount of information and technology, and it's actually very scary. But I found that I started dating this guy 
Oh, and I think, yeah, within first date, I researched and I found out that he had lied about having some like war hero medal, like he had been in the military, and he had like gotten someone else's medal um, that you only get if you're, you know, like a Purple Heart or some bullshit like that. And so he had worn one to some military event, and people were like, you haven't gotten that. What are you talking about? And so it caused this cascade of events of like, apparently it's like a crime or something. Well, and you found this out through Facebook stalking her. Or yeah. Google searching her. Google searching. And yeah, and it wasn't like right at the top. It was, you know, you a bit through. And I really didn't hunt him out that much. Well, because I think I was dating like three guys at the time. So <laughs> <laughs> he was like kind of low on the list. But it was crazy. Like his life had been kind of ruined by this. Did you bring the medal up with him? <laughs> Yeah, I did, actually. Yeah. And then I very say? quickly dumped him. And he ended up stalking me. He was a cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. But anyways, is it a good idea? I think it's a good idea to stalk people. But, I mean, who yeah. knows? Maybe I think you've got to, you've got to have a browse of their social media. Yeah, because I don't people are weird. <laughs> There's some weird people out there. Yeah. That do and social crazy. media, well, now to be fair, social media can be very misleading. You can get the wrong idea about someone. Yeah, it's true. I don't know. I think it's kind of a... But a good browse just to see what kind of thing, you know, if they've got battler captions on their Instagrams or... Bat what? Oh, battler like... Oh, how do I explain that word? Like lame or cringe uh, Yeah, captions, totally. You know, like me and the lads out surfing, what a day on the waves. Hashtag fit hashtag wave hashtag dude. You know, well, instantly you'd be like, no, nah, red really? cross. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Well, I'd be more like if they had something about Trump or some uber oh, yeah, conservative yeah. Poli- you know, politics, then I'd be like, you should die. Yeah, or and- a boy who um, would Instagram food. Like, no, it's a girl thing. Oh, what, Don't do yeah. That. Oh, I dated a guy, the same guy who dumped me, actually, on my birthday. Uh, who used to he? literally, he was obsessed with, he was a fitness model, so he looked pretty good. But. He would, you know, you'd get the whole rundown of his whole meal plan for the day and what his macros were and his exact workout. And it was just like, oh, thank God he was pretty because, oh, my God, I just wanted to fucking poke my own eyes out. So thank God he dumped me. Could not deal with that change every day. It was more, it was more the blow to the ego. But yeah. really, when I look back now, I just go, oh, you fucking thick bastard. Blessing in disguise. And, yeah. And he had this thing where he'd whistle through his front teeth. He'd be like, Shh, I can't even do it. But he'd make this whistling noise. And it drove me insane. So thank God. Stalk people. You never know what you might find. <laughs> now, this podcast is a wee bit shorter than usual because, like I said at the beginning, we mucked things oh. up and the microphones weren't rolling for about 20 minutes so yeah. then we had to go back and repeat everything that we'd already said and oh, heard God. from each other yeah technology <laughs> you can't bloody win no you can't so we are gonna do we're gonna do another one in a few days mm-hmm. so there'll be something way cooler and better and, and this is just random shit that we're talking out of our ass basically yeah yeah <laughs> this one wasn't great <laughs> this, isn't, one our, this is not our best work <laughs> so don't judge us and what other what other tips can i give i can't think of anything don't right drink now too much. don't take candy from strangers if you want someone to find you attractive tilt your head when you talk to them Took your head oh, really? to the left or the right. Next time you see me, I'm just like, Hi. head on my, head on my <laughs> shoulders. Hello there, <laughs> men. Yeah, because this, people perceive you as more attractive because you're actually exposing a bit of your carotid artery. Oh, yeah. And so they find you more trustworthy. And they actually rate people that have their heads straight up and down um, as less attractive, especially men. So you got to tilt your head. Smile, shoulders back, tits out. Yeah, no. Okay, head tilted. Got it. Good tip. Yeah, bit of a tip. And we'll be back very soon.